Hi, my name is Chris Reagan. I'm an economics professor at McGill University and I'm chair of Canada's Ecofiscal Commission. Back in 2014, a group of Canadian economists got together and created the Ecofiscal Commission. And our goal was to advocate the use of practical policies that would improve environmental outcomes and economic outcomes at the same time. Back then, this was a really polarized debate. And we thought that having a bunch of economists weigh in on the issue would be particularly valuable. We examined lots of environmental issues, but by far the most important is climate change. And so most of our focus was on the best way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Being economists, we naturally focus on policies that are cost effective. Now this is neither an academic or an intangible idea. If we achieve our objectives by using policies that are more expensive and higher cost than is necessary, then those extra resources aren't available for getting the things that we all want more of, like better healthcare or education or recreation or poverty reduction. So cost effectiveness is a central plank of greater prosperity for Canadian homes and businesses. And using cost-effective policies also means we can be more aggressive, more ambitious in pushing for a cleaner economy. So what is the lowest cost way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? The answer is to put a price on carbon. And that's true for three reasons. First, it's flexible. When you put a price on carbon emissions, households and businesses have the freedom to respond the way that's best for their situation. And that flexibility keeps costs low. Second, it's simple. It's across the economy. And that means you need fewer other high-cost policies to reduce emissions. And the third thing is that it can be ramped up gradually over time, allowing people to plan for the future. What's the alternative to a carbon price? It's either more intrusive regulations or it's subsidies. Regulations tend to be prescriptive. They tell households and businesses what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And that inflexibility tends to drive up costs. Subsidies require higher taxes or more public debt, and they often end up paying for things that would have happened anyway. As Ecofiscal winds down its activities over the next few months, carbon pricing in Canada moves from theory to reality, and that's good for the country. Carbon pricing comes with lots of details, and they will be refined over time. We need to think about how best to recycle carbon pricing revenues back into the economy in the way that's best for Canadians and best for the economy. We need to think about the impact on low-income households and how it can be offset through rebates. We need to think about designing the carbon pricing system so that it's best to protect the competitiveness of Canadian businesses. And we really need to think about where the carbon price is gonna go over the next several years. If we're not prepared to raise that price as the way to reduce emissions, then we'll end up using more higher cost policies and that's not good for our prosperity. So there's lots of work to do and hopefully Canadians will continue to think about and advocate practical carbon pricing for Canada. From all of us at Ecofiscal, our sincere thanks to you. We're especially grateful to those who read our work and supported us over the past five years, and we hope that our work continues to be useful for you. If this is the first time you've come to Ecofiscal, then welcome to the logic of pollution pricing. We hope that our research serves you well. All of the very best to you for a cleaner and more prosperous future.